The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. If you've gone through a divorce, then take that vine and don't let the depression drive you into hopelessness, but throw it over the wall. Let me find somebody else who needs help. Let me find somebody else going through chemo. And let me throw my vine over that wall because I've got living water that'll get me through it. They need it too. If you have a Bible, I'd love for you to open it to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49, and I want to begin reading with verse 22. Uh, Jacob is dying. He's the old man. He's, he has uh, 10 sons and two grandsons. And I'm going to show you now in Genesis 20, uh, 49 in verse 22. Joseph, he gets to his son Joseph. You will be a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a whale whose branches the word, that word bow is garden. You'll be like a garden by a whale whose branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, hated him, hated on him, we would say. But his bow remained in strength. Verse 25, by the God of your father who will help you, by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb. In other words, your children. The blessings, the blessings, he said, of your father have, excel, have excelled the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost. Listen to this. They shall be the head on the head of Joseph. And the crown of the head of him who separate, who was separated from his brothers. Little reference there as to what he went through. How he was separated from his brothers, went down into Egypt, was given a raw deal. But he notices, notice that he says something. He says, Joseph, because you didn't get bitter, and because you found a well. And you will receive a double portion because he decided to bless others. He didn't hoard the blessing to himself. He abundantly gave of what he had to others. Who did he give to? He gave to his brothers. He gave to Egyptians. He gave to Pharaoh. He gave to those, even Potiphar's wife and husband who had falsely accused him. He gave them life. He ultimately, had he not done what he did, they would have died because there was a famine and all of those people would have died. And now the father is saying, because you extended and reached beyond the walls. So important to see that. You reached beyond the walls, beyond the walls of confinement, beyond the walls of where you are. You, you had something in you. And he said, because you went beyond the walls, God will bless you double on the home front. Jacob, because you were willing to not just find the whale and receive from the whale and become a, a blessed place and a blessed person, and you could have just soaked in all of those blessings when you became in that powerful position that you came in, but because you saw people who were beyond the walls of your blessing, you saw people who couldn't offer you anything. Really, they didn't deserve your help, but you reached a branch out beyond the walls. God said, I'm going to bless, and I'm going to add not 10 tribes, but I'm going to have 12 tribes, and two of those tribes will be your two boys, Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. And there's 12 tribes of Israel, and, and will always be and on the walls of the foundations of the 12 foundations of New Jerusalem, the names of those 12 are on there along with the 12 disciples. And two of those names will be Manasseh and Ephraim forever. Why? Because, Joseph, you found a whale. We know that whale was Jesus Christ. We know that whale represents the living water. We know that whale represents Acts 2.38 where he said, for this promise is unto you and unto your children 
To them that are afar off, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He found a well that watered his soul, watered his life, but he didn't hoard it. He didn't keep it to himself. He put branches that ran over the wall, the Bible said. God saw it spiritually, and he said, because you've done that, there's a greater blessing coming on you than the other boys. Now, if you read about the other boys, they usually got one verse of blessing. Judah was the runner-up. Judah means praise, which ought to tell you something. If you're sitting there quiet, you're missing some blessings because he got two and a half verses of blessing, but Joseph got five verses of blessing. And he tells why, because you went beyond the walls, because you decided to go for it. You found a well, but you didn't keep it inside the walls. Instead of keeping the, the well inside. Come on, folks. I'm preaching about what happened to you when you found the well named Jesus Christ. Did he really make a change in your life? Did you really find living water? And yet so often we come to church and this is about all we get out of Jesus. And when we go beyond these walls, he has no place in our life. He has no place in our home life, in our family life, in our routine of life. But he said, because I saw you taking living water with you beyond the walls of a church building, beyond the walls of an hour at Free Chapel, but it began to flow out to hurting people, to Egyptians, to those who are lost, to those who don't know Christ, because you had a heart that said, I can't keep it to myself. I, I, I found life, and I, I see them, and they're lost, and they're broken, and they're going to hell. If somebody doesn't reach them, if this book is true, they're going into eternity without God. But I found someone who would not just drink from the well and be content inside the walls but they would send branch uh, a vine over the wall into those hurting, dry lives. He ran branches beyond the walls. And God said, because you did that, I'm going to bless you double. You'll have two tribes. None of the other boys, their sons was the tribe, but you get two in your family, Joseph, because you went beyond the walls. Not many whales but one whale. There are not many ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. There are not many names and gods that we pray to. There's only one name and one God, and his name is Jesus. Would you give him praise if you believe that? And because you were willing to stretch for the outreach, because you were willing to, to, to not just be blessed in here on Sunday morning, with living water, but something got a hold of your heart, a compassion for the lost, a compassion outside the walls. There's somebody who's, who, who, who's, who's an alcoholic who, who's waking up in their own vomit this morning. Just outside these walls, there's a young girl, a teenager who's gotten pregnant out of wedlock and she's thinking about aborting that baby. Just outside these walls, maybe within a mile or so from this very campus or the campuses where you're watching this, there's somebody who's suicidal. There's somebody who's on drugs and they can't get any hope and they're thinking about just taking in all they can and end it all. And we have living water, but somebody's got to send a vine beyond these walls. Beyond these walls. They're crying. They're dying. And he said, if you'll do it, I'll bless you on the home front double. I think that we need to understand that that he'll bless us double portion the more we reach, the more we stretch, the more we say we cannot just be blessed here on Sunday morning. In Acts 19 and 10, it said that they reached all of Asia with the word in the space of two years. What in the world? How do you reach a whole nation and a whole continent? They reach all of Asia within the space of two, of two years. 
They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have TVs. They didn't have cameras. They didn't have great ministries with big outreaches. What did it? Fired up Christians who found the well and said, we're going beyond these walls. We cannot just come to church and hear another sermon and hear another sermon and hear another sermon and then leave here beyond these walls and it never change us. It never rearrange us. It, I, I don't want to just be an inspirational preacher. And I don't want to just be, um, you know, there, there's, there's inspiration, there's information. I, I want to, you know, when I first started, I guess I was wanting to be an inspirational evangelist. And then as I got deeper, you know, a little bit older, I wanted to be an informational preacher. You know, I want to have a lot of content and, and, and I want to be informational and inspirational. But really, now at this point in my life, beyond any of that, I want to be transformational. I want God to come and not just get up here and preach another sermon and say a bunch of words, but oh God, transform somebody's life today. Send a vine of living water into somebody's house, somebody's marriage that's drying up on the brink of dying. Oh God, somehow, some way, we've got living water. And if we don't have it, we ought to get it this morning. I found the well, but I can't keep it to myself beyond these walls. They're dying. And God says, when you reach, when you pray for somebody else, when you love somebody else, when you minister to somebody else, when you send a branch beyond these walls on your job, in the office, in the school, on the campus, there's people all around you. You've grown up in it. You've got the whale. You've been in this all of your life. But the joy, ladies and gentlemen, is not just coming to church, but it's when you get so full of living water that verse that said they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. If people can just come to this church and sit under this ministry and just hear singing and sermons and it changed nothing. I think of that, of that dream that that Pharaoh had that Joseph interpreted and he saw seven skinny cows and seven fat cows and the seven skinny cows swallowed the seven fat cows. But there's a strange part of that verse. It said, but the skinny cows did not show it. They did not manifest it. It says after they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them. And I can't help but wonder to people, do you guys come to church and you just hear another sermon and hear another sermon? Sermon, but no one would ever know. They never hear you talk about Jesus. They never hear you witness. Do, does anybody in your family know? Does anything ever change in your life? Or do you just come to church and take it in inside these walls? But when you walk out of here, you turn the same music on, go back to the same attitude, the same spirit, the same unforgiveness, the same lust, the same pride. Come on, church. We're not supposed to be that just in here. We're supposed to have life out there. And something's wrong when we're taking it in, but we look the same. We act the same. God help us. God help us. You know what's wrong with the church? I'm going to tell you, if we're careful in the body of Christ, the church will become more ingrown than outgrown. And when we become ingrown, we become like an ingrown toenail. And we just become sore and, and touchy and ag fighting. You're ingrown. You're like an ingrown toenail. To toenail. You're sore all the time. You ever met Christians like that? They're just ticked off and sore all the time. You want to know what's wrong with you? You want to know what's wrong with me when I get like that? I'm ingrown. 
But the moment that you begin to do, go back to the mission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The minute you go back to purpose, the minute you go back to destiny and you get your attention off yourself and you get your attention, quit having a pity party and feeling sorry for yourself and just start, well, you know what? I must be going through what I'm going through for a reason. So let me just take a vine and go out here to other hurting people. If you've gone through a divorce, then take that vine and don't let the, the depression drive you into hopelessness, but throw it over the wall and say, well, let me go find somebody else who's going through it, and I'm going to tell them Jesus is the end. Let me find somebody else who needs help. Let me find somebody else going in through chemo, and let me throw my vine over that wall and minister to them, because I've got living water that'll get me through it. They need it too. One of my favorite one of my favorite trips that I've ever gone on as a vacation, besides being with my family, was many, many years ago, I went on a hunting trip in Canada with uh, one of the board members, Don Bryant and his son, and, and another uh, guy in the church, Phil Kinsey, and we just had the biggest time, but we took, they took two of their friends, and, I don't, and there's no other way to say it, they were pure heathens, amen. <laughs> they, they, good guys, though. I love these men, and it was the, one of the most wonderful trips I've ever been on, and here's why. When people find, I don't have any Christian, I don't have any friends except Christians. <laughs> it hit me because of what I do. I, I, you ain't going to see me in the club. You ain't going to see me. I, 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 don't, I don't know anybody hardly. I don't meet anybody hardly in my world that's not in church and part of so when I went on this hunting trip, I'll never forget it. I love these guys. One of them's name, the daddy was named Little Jack, and he had, or Big Jack, and, the, and he had a son named Little Jack. <laughs> that was their real names, Big, Big Jack and Little Jack. And they were redneck Georgia redneck guys, and they don't go to church, and they, and, and they, they, they were very respectful and stuff, but man, they, blankety blank, blank. You ever seen people that are good at cussing? I'm talking about good at cussing. <laughs> And these guys were just, it was like breathing them. Blankety blank, blankety blank, blank. Oh, sorry, preacher. Sorry, preacher. Sorry, preacher. And then we'd have meals. We were with them a whole week. I'm telling you, I'm out in the trees with them, and I'm out, and we're hunting bear, and, and, and that one of them would hit blankety blank, 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 blankety blank, blank, blank. And, and it felt so good to be around a heathen. I love those guys. And I kept up with him, and I'd call him every once in a while. And uh, one Sunday, a few months later, Big Jack came to my office. Susan Page was my secretary then. And she said, Pastor, somebody's here to see you. And I don't know who he is, but he's here. And, and I said, who is it? Big Jack. Tell Big Jack to come on here. Get out of the way. Come on, Big Jack. He came in, and he said, I'm sick, and I need prayer. My boy's in trouble. Pray for me. He got on his knees. He asked Jesus, come on. He asked Jesus. Beyond these walls is where ministry. Some of you are getting lukewarm because you're not reaching. If you could ever, if you could ever get beyond these walls, that's where life is. That's where they're so hungry for what we've got. Be careful how you criticize people who go beyond these walls. We need to get beyond the denominational walls. I'm almost done, but listen. We need to get beyond the walls of denominationalism. Baptists or Methodists or Pentecostal. We don't have the luxury of disunity anymore. We need to come together, all of us, body of Christ, all of us. And you may not like my style and I may not prefer your style, but if we're preaching Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the only life, then we need to link up arm in arm and let's win this world because Jesus is coming soon. The trumpet is going to sound and those those who are not ready are going to be left. They're going to be left. There are Josephs all over this building. And God is saying, I'll bless your dream double if you'll make a commitment beyond these walls. The only reason the sun rose this morning is because the church is facing an unfinished task. 
It's all about the lost, the perishing. They're headed for a famine. God forgive us if we have living water. And some of us used to have it, but we need to get refilled this morning. You've forgotten what you've got. You've let the cares of this life choke out the living water. Keep reaching. Keep dreaming. The archers will shoot. But God said, I'll give you double. Let me close with this. But I don't want this church to ever be the old school Christian spirit. The old school Christian that says, you're lucky that I just come to church. If that's your attitude, you're an old school Christian. And you're going to miss the joy of reward in eternity. <laughs> Joseph not only had two sons that received the double portion. But I read it again last night. Five generations later, there is a guy by the name of Naboth who had, the world would call it a green thumb. It, he was not blessed because he had a green thumb. The Bible said Naboth had a vineyard that was exceedingly prosperous. And it just so happened it was right beside King Ahab's summer palace. And King Ahab, the king of all Israel, would come to his summer palace and he would look at his yard and he had all kinds of maintenance crews out there supposed to keep his gardens up and his, and his, and his, and his place beautiful. And he would look over at his neighbor, Naboth, and Naboth's vineyard was so blessed, so mighty, so prosperous that he looked in envy from his summer palace at Naboth and he thought, what a green thumb that guy has. He didn't have a green thumb. He was five generations down from Joseph. Joseph was his great, 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 great grandfather. And that blessing of because you've reached beyond these walls with living water, it will always bring double portion on the home front. And five generations later, after Joseph is dead, here's a guy named Naboth. When the king came and said, sell me your vineyard, he said, I, listen to his answer, cannot sell my inheritance. I have a spiritual inheritance that was passed to Manasseh and Ephraim and from them to their children and to their children and to their children. And five generations later, I'm telling you, sir, my spiritual inheritance is not for sale. I don't care how much gold and fame you offer me. This is my inheritance. Before we leave today's broadcast, I want to ask you to join me in reaching out a branch of blessing to help the hurting and elderly Holocaust survivors living in Israel. We've already purchased the property, but there are still essential expansions and improvements that must be done. So today I'm asking you to join me in the very heart of God and become a fruitful vine to those in desperate need in Israel. I'm asking some of you to give a thousand dollars today. I'm not asking for myself, but I believe that there are a hundred people watching this program that can sow a thousand dollars. There's some that can sow ten thousand. There's probably someone that could give even greater than that. I promise you today that if you will obey God, we know God will reward you with double blessing for helping the hurting Holocaust survivors in Israel. Together we can provide them food, shelter, and most importantly, love and compassion, the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today on Kingdom Connection. Thank you for partnering with us. Remember what you do for Israel. God says, I will bless you in double fashion portion. I believe he's speaking to hundreds of you today and we need to hear from you. 
Pray about it and let God speak to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. The Holocaust ended more than 70 years ago, yet there are still tens of thousands of elderly people who experience the horrors of the Nazi death camps. And today, there are about 190,000 of them still alive in Israel. Unbelievably, more than 50,000 of them continue to live in poverty. Last year, because of your generosity, we started a work in Israel by purchasing two properties to provide housing for these Holocaust survivors. But there is still a need in Israel to help these precious people. There are essential expansions that must be done, including additional housing for even more survivors, dining facilities, and a recreational area to foster and cultivate community. Your gift today will provide our Jewish brothers and sisters with a home and a place where dignity and purpose can be restored. With your gift of $1,000, we'll place your name on the Founders Wall at the Holocaust Center in Jerusalem. And as a special gift of appreciation, we'll send you a personalized Israel blessing plaque. When you send your gift of $100 or more, we'll send you a legacy certificate honoring your investment into the lives of these Holocaust survivors. We'll also include an exclusive book commemorating Israel's 70th anniversary as a nation. As a thank you to everyone who joins us in providing housing for these elderly Jewish people, we'll send you Jensen Franklin's teaching series, Inheritance, The Secret to Receiving God's Blessing and Influence. Every gift makes a difference and will help accelerate the vision. Together, we can be a blessing to Israel. To learn more, call now or visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv. by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.org.